need to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Oscar Bevis for IFL TV. Matt Macklin, Georgie, mate. Thanks very much for giving me some of your time. I'm um, here in York, of something special about this place, of course. Yeah, I just think it's because it's sort of probably the spiritual home of uh, British boxing, isn't it? Uh, uh, from going way back in the amateur, so many amateur shows here. I think the Repton Boxing Club, is ramp, you know, their gym's around the corner. They use this for a lot of their home shows. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I think the first time I was here was probably 96 to watch the junior ABAs. Uh, first time I ever seen Ricky Hatton box as an, am as an amateur. That day, uh, you know, there was probably, I don't know, 50 fights that day, I, I guess. Um, and been back many, many, many times since. Seen everyone over the years box here. So, yeah, it's a special place, really. Yeah, it is a wicked place. And where are we going to see Caroline fight for the IBO world title tomorrow night? Um, it's one of them, as soon as she turned over, there was kind of talk of how quickly she's going to move, when she's going to be fighting the top girls. Um, it's funny because she's kind of like a bit of a, I guess like a silent killer. She doesn't say too much, but when she gets in the ring, she, she does business. Yeah, um, Katie Taylor's a bit like that, you know, very kind of meek and, you know, softly spoken, shy outside of the ring. But when the bell goes, she becomes a tiger. Uh, Caroline's a bit like that, you know, real lovely, nice uh, demeanor outside the ring. But in the ring, when the bell goes, she's ferocious, very aggressive. Uh, great hand speed, explosive, punches in combinations, and you know, for women's boxing, she scored a lot, a lot of you know, inside the distance wins. And she's not been kind of shy of saying that the top girls in the division, the likes of Michaela Mayer, and just kind of goes in and around that weight. She hasn't been shy in saying, "Yes, I'm young, kind of new to the pro game, but I will happily mix it with them right now." Yeah, she's 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 ambitious. She's hungry. She's a uh, uh, very um, you know, lots of self-belief and confidence, but in, a, but in a nice way, you know, she's calling people out, but not in a derogatory manner. She's quite respectful, but she's just making it very clear. I believe in myself. I believe I'm the best and I want to prove it. Yeah, can't wait to see her do her thing. Um, we'll talk about Vidal Riley moving very nicely, signed with 258 Management, obviously with Anthony Joshua at the helm. Um, a good fight for him tomorrow night, kind of the first step on, on the title ladder, but yeah, Vidal has looked really hot so far. Yeah, very impressed with Vidal uh, since I've seen him as a professional. Never watched him as an amateur, but I've read up on what he's achieved. He had a decorated amateur career. I think a bit of a stop-start, slow-burning professional career. Box, you know, turned over, I think, in the States. Obviously, he was building his um, online profile in, U in the YouTube world. But, you know, he's been quite consistent recently. And, uh, and I think um, it's paid off. You can see the improvements, you can see the progress. Uh, he's developing really nicely. Uh, I like watching him box. He's got a nice, smooth, fluid style. Uh, he's got a good jab. He sets everything up off the jab, punches in combinations, and, uh, and he carries a nice bit of pop there as well. Yeah, looking forward to seeing him do his thing tomorrow night. Um, Matt, I don't want to make you feel old, but I saw earlier on Twitter, 17 years to the day since that fight with Jamie, um, how many times have you had to recall memories and talk about this fight? Thousands, I guess. Oh, yeah, completely. Every year. I think IFL, I remember an IFL 10-year video, I think, specifically. But, yeah, I mean, it must have been all, yeah. all the time. I know, you know, it ain't going to be long, and it's going to be two decades ago, which then that does make you feel old. But, um, look, it was one of those fights, I think, that will, whoever was there on the night, you know, they witnessed a bit of history, I guess. Um, it was... A real sort of throwback British title fight, you know, uh, established, proven champion, already a Lonsdale belt winner outright uh, against a young, ambitious, hungry, um, mandatory challenger um, that was impatient and that wanted to get there. Um, and it was a fight in a leisure centre, cauldron of a leisure centre. It was like it was late September, but it was like that must have been a heat wave that day because it was like. I remember people were in shorts and t-shirts, but it was, uh, 
look, it was it was one of that. It was a, a fight that I lost. I was gutted at the time, but I'm proud of the fight it was and how it's been remembered since. Uh, and obviously, Jamie, you know, actually at the time there was no bad blood. There was a rivalry there, and it was, uh, you know, I wanted to take his head off on the night, but there was certainly wasn't. It wasn't a grudge fight by any means. I knew him when we, we, we would speak it. We'd seen each other at boxing events or things like that. And he was friendly with Ricky Hatton and Billy Graham, who were my camp team at the time. So uh, it wasn't, there was no needle in the build-up, just a kind of healthy rivalry. But uh, obviously we, we've been good friends since then. How much does a fight like that, kind of having to leave it all in there, kind of shape a fighter and not just what they remember, remember that sorry but kind of shape them and their career and even kind of their mental state because you have a lot of fights early on in your career where you'll fight guys that you know you're better than and you're kind of learning the program and learning that side of things but I guess it's them fights that really actually develop your heart your knowledge and kind of something inside of you in a professional ring well look you, you can you know you can be taught skills and drills and technique and um, you can talk about tactics and things like this in the gym with a coach and they're trying to transfer the knowledge and wisdom they have to the younger student, the fighter. Um, but in terms of heart and determination and uh, how deep you're, you're willing to dig, I don't, nobody can really give you that or teach you that or coach you that. You know, you, you, you've either got that or you haven't. And um, I think on that night, we both proved what who not what we were as boxers, but probably who we were as men. Yeah, wicked. I'm sure a few people will be flicking that fight on tonight um, to, to rewatch you back. Um, quick one. I want to talk about the weekend just gone and Joe Joyce's second defeat to Jule Zhang. Um, just kind of a little bit of a nightmare from, I guess, even the first fight that he took with Jule Zhang, um, and, and now perhaps in a little bit of a dark place when it comes to, I guess, wanting to achieve world honours. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, a loss is never the end, but I think the manner of the defeat back to back and given where Joe's age, miles on the clock, amateur and pro, and where does he go from here in terms of what's the route back to the top? It looks like it's a long, hard road back to where he was. And I don't know, I, I would, I'll, you know, only he can answer this question, I guess, but I would, I would be surprised if he's got the appetite for that long road back because you've got to remember he's not really in terms of risk reward ratio it doesn't he does it's not very favorable he's not a favorable opponent for anyone you know in order to get straight back up there he's got to fight someone in the top sort of you know five to ten and if you're in the top five to ten and you're trying to move yourself into that top five position do you, you don't really want to fight Joe Joyce because he's not bringing anything to the table now so it's, it's, it's hard to see where he goes from here um, I know Tony Bellew said that he believes without kind of the durability the toughness and the chin that Joe Joyce is, is a British level fighter um, is that a statement you agree with I know he's kind of taken quite a lot of pelters for saying that Tony um, when you look at kind of I know Fabio Wardley David Adelaide Fraser Clark that level um, do you feel like that's a fair comment or do you think Tony's been a bit unfair on Joe's other boxing ability outside of just his pure durability. I know what he's saying. I know I, I, do, I do get the point he's making. He, Joe's probably outstanding ability was his ability to take a shot. You know what I mean. But I don't think it's his only ability. I think his uh, he, he, his other abilities are probably underestimated because that's the outstanding one is his chin, uh, his physical strength. Uh, you know he's quite he's quite slow, but he's got good timing. So he's one of those guys who looks, he's got slow hand speed, but he hits you. That's because he's got good timing. So, um, it, but it's easy, that's, it's easy to underestimate that until you're in the ring with him, um, someone like that. Uh, so, uh, look, I, I know what Tony's saying. He's probably taking a bit out of context, but I, I get what he means. And in terms of Jule Zhang, if we take, say, the four as Wilder, Joshua, Usyk and Fury, um, does he make a dent in any of those guys, do you believe? Possibly, you know, if they fight the wrong fight. Uh, I know Joshua was already beating him as an amateur. You know, that was you know a long time ago now. Uh, but it's a hard fight for him. I think you know you stand in front of this guy. He's a hard fight. 
Um, he's what is he 20 stone plus? Uh, come quite compact, southpaw, bangs hard, you know, puts nice shots together, short, short you know, he's against Ergovic. He, he showed he, he isn't just a puncher, he's he, he, pretty good, you know, compact fighter, nice short punches on the inside. Um, a lot of people thought he was unlucky not to get that decision in Saudi against Hergovic, who, who is also probably one of those top guys in the division. So, yeah, Hergovic, Zhang, you know, obviously you've got the, the main four, Wilder, AJ, Usyk and Fury. But then sitting behind them, you've probably got Zhang and, and, and Hergovic. So, you know, eventually. And, and, and you know, that, those top four, there's, there's, a, there's a bit of mileage there already done, isn't there? So if you'd imagine Hergovic and Zhang are going to get their shot eventually, you know, sooner rather than later. Well, it looks like we won't get Joshua and Wilder anytime soon, anyway. No, that's, that's a shame, isn't it? We, uh, I feel we... like sometimes you just got to kind of close the door on things when it's... Because I feel like we've been talking about this from when Joshua first got his IBF, what, five years maybe now? Yeah, you say that, but like... You say that, but like close the door and then talk about which fight and then all of a sudden it can come back up. I, I, I don't think any of those fights are dead in the water. I think they're just dead in the water for right now. You know what I mean? But next, you know, as soon as both sides decide to sort of, they want to make it happen, you know, they can, they can always revisit that conversation. I, I, you know, who knows why, and without knowing the inside track, you don't know why those negotiations broke down, you know, but... but I, I don't know. They're, they're, I think I think those fights can always be revisited. You need to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never, never shot up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 